Hello everyone, this is the great lord and master, Osaron the Eternal. For a quick video, I just want to go over some um, sort of aspects of 8, like where 8 comes from and why we use 8, and how 8 becomes 9. Okay, as you see up here, this is just a little bit of a drawing. They got the numbers 1 through 8 separated in their... Uh, feminine and masculine uh, numbers. Obviously blue is feminine, red is masculine. And um, this shows you the numbers. See, um, if, you, if you recall from other videos in uh, the ideas of vortex math, uh, the numbers 1, 3, and 6 are the Kundalini numbers. Actually 1, 3, 6, and 9. But um, one is a number that can go in both realms. It can be the it can be in the material realm and the kundalini realm. Both it, it it can traverse both worlds, and they say that in vortex math, those guys too. But we see here the numbers written out one through eight, and you see how if you break the numbers into groups, okay, you got one and two, three and four, five and six, and then seven and eight. Well. The first three groups will have the assistance of a kundalini aspect to go along with it. So what that means is one and two, the one would be a kundalini aspect. The three and four, three would be a kundalini aspect. And then five and six, the six would be a kundalini aspect. And then when we get to the seven and the eight, these two numbers don't have a kundalini um, match to go with it. And this also is the fourth position too. So, if you recall from the Osiron Tarot Spiral, the first three months of the winter are the womb months, and the fourth month is the birth of the new year with the Emperor or Aries. Well, this is a lot like that because these first three pairs have a Kundalini assistance, and then the fourth one, which would be the Emperor, doesn't have that. This is the pure, pure material, uh, material realm, and the seven is the blood, and the eight is actually the body. And then when you combine those two numbers, it becomes fifteen, which is the devil card, and then that reduces to six, which is the masculine mask of Kundalini, or a symbol for the cube with a six. Okay, but these first three have the assistance of the Kundalini to go with it. Now, above here, you see a 3 and a 6. Well, if you take these three, if these six numbers that have the Kundalini assistance and combine them all together, that forms 21, in which, of course, reduces to 3. So now we see the 3 and the 6. But if you continue with the pairing, uh, when, when it reduces, uh, the 1 and the 2 become 3, the 3 and 4 become 7, the 5 and 6 become 11, then 2, and the 7 and 8, as we've seen, become 6. And then when you combine the 3 and the 7, that's 10, which is 1. And the 6 and the 2 become 8, which is here with 8. And now we see the 1 and the 8 again. And that combines to form 9 in 4 steps. Okay, So we're seeing the link of 4, too, the powerful link of 4. This is sort of like reverse engineering 9. So nine, 1 through 8 is the completeness of 9, which, when you add 1 through 8, becomes 36. But then you got one step where it turns into four, three, seven, two, and six, and then the, the third step is one and eight, and then the last final step is the nine. And you're gonna notice all of these numbers here, the three, seven, and one on this side are all feminine numbers, but when you add them together, they become two. On the second half, it's all the numbers combine to form masculine numbers, 2, 6, and 8, but when you combine them, they combine to form 7. So we see the 2 and the 7 again. And if you watch my uh, Fibonacci videos, the two most recent ones I made, 27 and 72 is a huge number associated with that, and it's also the center of the Kundalini grid mandala, which is an, an amazing video too. So we're seeing this. And then these five numbers, it sort of like looks like an inverted pentagram, 72, 1, 8, and 9. Well, if you combine all of those numbers, those five numbers, it becomes 27, too. So we're seeing this 
powerful uh, symmetry in the beauty of the natural way of the numbers. This is why the single digit code is so amazing because you don't have to do anything to it and it shows its divinity just by being what it is. You know. Now some people might be thinking, yeah, but you know, the, the single digit code is 0 through 9. Well, it still works when you do that. It just it does it in a little bit of a different way. Down here I have the numbers written out 0 through 9, all 10 digits. And if you combine uh, the 0 and the 1, that becomes a 1. 2 and 3 become a 5. 4 and 5 become 9. Uh, 6 and 7 become 4. 13 and 4. And 8 and 9 become uh, 8 via set 17 of star. Remember the tarot correlations to all these. And then when you combine these numbers, these first four, it becomes 15, 1 and a 5, then 6. And then the middle 4 and 5 become 9 directly. And these final four here are, are the masculine numbers of 4 and 8, which become 3. It's polar opposites. So and we're shifting polarities all the time here. And that becomes 9 again. And it still is done in four steps. So if you do it this way, it does it in four steps. If you do it this way, it does it uh, in four steps as well. And uh, you just see the beauty of how that becomes. They, you know, they kind of look like little pyramids. And over here, you know, you, we've seen this before. Like when you write out 0 through 9 and then push it into itself with 0 and 9 going the other way, they all reduce to 9. Well, the same thing happens when you do it with the 8s. So if you write out 1 through 8 going this way and then push it into itself going the other way, 1 through 8, they all combine to form 9, and the Kundalini Khanda would still stay in place with 3 and 6. So that's how important it is. Remember, life is basically a two-way stream of cathode and anode waveforms. Everything is waveform, or the simulation of waveform, let me say that. But everything is a two-way stream. Life is all about balance. You know, uh, nothing goes one way. It's you know, there's an unseen, reverse-engineered waveform that goes backwards through time too. That's probably a lot of how and why a lot of people do have clairvoyant abilities, because in theory, at least, you should be able to know what happens in the future, because there's a part of you that's living backwards through time, even though everything happens simultaneously. Actually, one of the a great vi video to watch on that is my Proof of God 4. That was a video I made just before I really got into the tarot and the true tree of life with the fifth video of Proof of God. But Proof of God 4 is a really interesting video because it uh, shows a lot of that two-way action. And, uh, one, one thing I want to get to, too, is that I was talking to somebody who's into astrology and numerology, a great person, but they seem to be they stuck in the superficial charlatan world of the tarot, astrology, and numerology because there is, I mean, the surface facade of tarot, astrology, and numerology is basically just a load of charlatan bullshit. And um, there was a debate as to whether one is feminine or masculine or not. The zero and one, or one and two, like which numbers of the one and two is masculine and feminine? Well, the one is feminine and the two is masculine, you know, for several reasons that we know, I'll explain that in a second. But one, you know, the word universe means one, and the word yoni means the female sexual organs from which we come. So universe, you know, that's why I call the, the universe a yoniverse, because that's the one. And then the two, which is the masculine principle, which is just duality or electricity, is number two. So that's why I say that. So one is the yoni, or one, and two is the concept of duality via electricity, so, which is the masculine expression of all life. So that's why I say that. That's why I say one is feminine, two is masculine. But there is a case where one is masculine. One is masculine in relation to the zero. So over here we see 0 and 1. So in this case, because it's a thing, because the 1 is a thing, it is a masculine thing, at least in relation to 0. So that's how 1 is masculine. So in this case, with 0 and 1, the 0 is the feminine aspect, and the 1 takes on 
the masculine aspect, but that's only in relation to zero and one. So once you get into the world, that one thing that is created is a feminine being. <laughs> so, so the universe is here, or the only verse is here, and that is the masculine expression of zero. So then when you get into the one and the two over here, the one takes its rightful place as feminine, and then the two is next with the masculine aspect of electricity. And, you know, the zero and the one would be the Shakti aspect, and the one and two would be how we perceive it in the world with the Shiva aspect. Because, remember, zero is an impossible state to know as long as you're conscious. I mean, as long as you are a conscious being, no matter what form you take, the state of pure zero is impossible to know. Because as long as you're conscious, you are a two-way stream of I and I am not. There's no way around that. The only thing we can do is acknowledge the idea of zero, and that's what we do with the states of zero through nine, which form ten. Ten conditions of zero through nine. So that's how that works like that. So, um, so this is the one and the two is actually the expression of our world. The one is actually zero, and the two is what happens when that one is created. You get the dual states of zero and one, or I am and I am not. The boundary of your one is zero, regardless of what that is. So that's how you know zero becomes a one, and that's how. We see that here. Um, now, the, the, I, I actually showed this on Proof of God 4 too, but it's the Yi Jing. And that's another way we get 8. Because in the Yi Jing, it's, there's these things called trigrams. And what that is, is a combination of yin and yang lines in a trinary form. So every combination of the uh, yin and yang lines in a unbalanced trinary form produces eight possible combinations. Because if it was just yin and yang, there would be no imbalance, there would be no movement, it wouldn't move. It's that third aspect that creates imbalance and allows for corrective motion to take place in, in the dynamic of life and movement. So that's why it's three. So with the yi jing, all the possible combinations of yin and yang lines in a trinary form produce a total of eight possible combinations. And eight times eight is sixty-four, which is the Yi Jing, all the possible because that uh, in the Yi Jing you take the trigrams, combine two of them together to form a hexagram, again six, and uh, all, all all those combinations are sixty-four. And sixty-four reduces to one. So we're seeing the dynamic of numbers again and the three six dynamic because the Yi Jing is made up of uh, trigrams, which is a three, and you combine two of them to get a six, which is a hexagram. So, so that's why we got that. And another one is the, the uh, pentagram here. Each pentagram uh, is a, each corner of the pentagram has a masculine and feminine aspect of each element. You know, fire or water has a positive and negative aspect. Fire has a posit positive and negative aspect. Air has a positive and negative aspect, and Earth has a positive and negative aspect. And then the spirit aspect would be the zero and the nine. So that's how we get nine from the pentagram two, which was covered in Proof of God one. And again, just a little illustration. This is a cube here, and the cube is made out of the numbers one through eight. And the center of the cube is actually what the zero and nine is. If you recall from the video... Uh, what is it? Uh, the whole series with the Yggdrasil. The whole series with, with the Yggdrasil, Yggdrasil is pretty good, but the culmination of that is the uh, octahedron kundalini grid matrix that is formed by a forward and backward motion of the construction of the Yggdrasil using the principles of vortex math to produce an infinite cube matrix, which is one of the most amazing videos I've ever, ever made because that is a, shows the sublime nature of the you know principles of the single digit code and the principles of vortex math it's really amazing but this is what we see here so the structure of the Yggdrasil it looks like kind of like this a cube in the middle and it's got the you know angles going up but those angles are really supposed to be going into the center of the cube so the Yggdrasil is a cube and the zero nine point is the center of the cube and that's what we get with this 
So this is just a quick video, just sort of a um, augmentation and exp you know, of the series as a whole, just to get into why eight is used, how eight becomes nine, or how nine is derived from eight, and why the infinity symbol is an eight on its side. So, so that, you know, eight is an, an important number for completion. That's why it is a uh, symbol of completion. So, so. Um, yeah, thank you and namaste. Oh, by the way, if you want to support my work, I could always use the help at rwblack13 at gmail at gmail dot com via PayPal. Um, so thank you again and namaste.